All right, everyone. So today we got to go ahead and test probably the most exciting character that I've seen maybe since like Fiona for me. Um, I was really excited when I saw Fiona come out, mainly because she's also support. And then as soon as I saw Purin uh, being the announced character inside the game, I was like, oh, she's got potential, especially if she's going to be a solid support. because She's got so much viability across the game. And that's what we're here to test today. So you can see I have a Mythic 2 Purin as per usual. I recommend always, if you're deciding to go for her, probably don't want to keep her at Mythic 2. Probably want to boost her up to Immortal so that you can actually get the full value out of her. But at least get one copy for sure. But for her specifically, the reason why you're going to want to bring her up to Immortal isn't actually because of the stats, right? She doesn't really scale off of any stat particularly. She just goes ahead and gets the accuracy, which is what you really want, which I'll go over my build in just a second. After that, it really doesn't matter. She just needs to survive, right? The Immortal is for that exclusive 30, which gives you constant energy restoration for your entire team, which is actually really, really good. We're going to see if she's able to do a lot of good work here just without that. I'm going to see kind of the difference between her on the battlefield and not having her on the battlefield for energy regeneration and see if it's actually noticeable and all that good stuff. Now, what are we getting out of her without higher levels? Well, we're still getting the HP recovery. You do want max HP on her for this, but to be honest, if you're running her in conjunction with another healer, this doesn't matter nearly as much, which is kind of what I decided to do. I'm using her kind of as replacement to res, or that's what I'm gonna be doing here. As such, this heal is nice if you're an immortal this actually will heal for a good amount if you want to get some max hp on her then we have a little bit of damage increasing great this is what it gets really exciting she's able to restore energy for the ally with the highest attack and then the ultimate is going to give you a big damage boost and a big damage reduction for your entire team and then constantly give you just a straight up damage increase which is really really nice as such, what do we got on her? Well, we got HP focus, damage reduction, and accuracy. You want 200 accuracy on her so that you can get the max value out of her ultimate, which is going to be pretty important. Pretty straightforward. Stack as much HP as you can while also getting that 200 accuracy every single time. And then, of course, slap on some damage reduction if you can get it. Perfectly fine. Exclusive 10 today. Let's go ahead and dive into some content. I'm actually going to go ahead and start off with something a little bit different. I want to actually see what she's like in something like a Terra Dome, right? So I'm going to run in and just try her out kind of as a support in here just to see what she's able to accomplish. So I'm going to just let this run and show you all kind of the energy restoration of some of our characters. Now, Dominic has the higher amount of attack and you can kind of see the energy build up here of Dominic just kind of cruising along doing some good damage we got our ultimate what is that 347 and then as we let this play out we'll just let him hit a couple times this obviously isn't going to be perfect uh because maybe you're going to proc the ultimate a little bit sooner etc but you can see there we got our second ultimate at 332 okay what I want to test is how are we going to change things up here? Uh, let's go ahead and drop in Purin. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Okay. Drop her in so that she can go ahead and pass over the ultimate charge. And I'm going to put this on 1x speed so we can hopefully see her actually giving the ultimate. And there you could see the thumbs up. That was the ultimate charge given to Dominic there. And you can see the ultimate's already coming out a little bit sooner from Dominic. Um, we're going to get hopefully another ultimate charge and we are getting a bunch of damage increasing from him because that there's another ultimate charge and you can see another ultimate comes out from dominic and a big damage boost as well from purin's ultimate as you can see the big lines all over the field so already you could see kind of the ultimate generation with purin and without it's a rough test it's just to show you all what that kind of does for you what i'm more curious about here is kind of the difference in DPS with a res versus someone like a Purin. So let me see here. We have the simulation battle, which is perfect. We'll go ahead and run in with a res. So right here, I have my res. 
Um, this has Hagridon on it, which is not exactly what I'm looking for. Um, let me just swap over to my Gabal here. And uh, this is totally fine. We'll use them. Now, obviously, we're going to get more points from having Purin because she's the hero of the week. And yes, we're going to get some more value because she is the unique character. But I figured this is kind of an interesting test. We'll run Rez plus Dominic because that's the boost that you want to have and see the kind of damage numbers that we're able to pump out at about the minute and a half mark. Then we're going to run in with Purin in place of Rez and see the damage numbers of overall or characters at the one minute 30 mark. I guess I should say the 30 second mark because we're going to let it run for a minute 30. So I'll be back at both those times just to kind of compare and contrast the DPS difference. See if there's a really big difference with Rez or with Purin. All right, so I went ahead and paused here. You can see I'm at 1.7 billion damage. This is not a guy to give the most score possible. This is just to showcase kind of the DPS difference, right? The 1.7 billion damage coming out from this team. We're gonna just take out Rez, but in Purin and see kind of the difference. Again, this is gonna be the perfect test because we don't have um, her in a battle that she's not getting boosted in because this is the unique guild boss battle. I get it, I get it as well as her not being exclusive 30, but it gives us kind of an idea if we can really notice a big, big difference um, and whether or not that big, big difference is really going to showcase itself in other areas, which I will be testing here in a bit. So I had to pull this up because we're only a minute into the fight and you can see we're already hitting 1.5, a little bit over 1.5 billion damage so far. We're gonna easily crush through the 1.7 billion damage coming out from the previous team. Purin. Uh, Purin here is an absolute disgusting character for increasing the overall DPS of your team, literally in replacement of Rez. What a powerful, powerful showcase of this at Mythic 2. Again, we could be regenerating the energy way faster if we had the exclusive 30 on her. So we'll pause right when we reach that 30 second mark. Look at that. We got an additional 700 million damage off of her what a powerful showing that is almost a 50 percent increase in dps now again we are getting a little bit of an advantage because she is used in the specific content that she's supposed to be used in let me just pull up here um, i'm still getting used to the ui <laughs> so part of me on that one here but i'll pull up here and just kind of showcase some of her skills so uh you can see she has the battlefield or the, the the bonus for public section security nine heroes which we are using kusanagi we don't have that talent effect right the talent effect for Silent Knight doesn't actually get doubled here because we don't have a talent effect, right? Um, you could see here, we don't have any advantage here in the guild boss fight. And then the damage boost passive is increased to 20% in the Soul Incursion collab event. So this is where you're seeing, okay, you're just getting a little bit of extra damage over your entire team, but a 10% to a 20% is not good enough to make up for 700 million damage, okay? Yes, this is a, a boost in that Colo event, but that is not just the Colo event boost. It is her providing so much value for your team. So in place of res, yeah, you're gonna get a lot more score. Of course, if you have like a great assassin or things like that, maybe that might fulfill the role. But if you're looking to use res or support in that spot, easily easily using Purin is going to be a fantastic uh situation that you can go for now, now i do want to try her out in a fight that isn't being boosted just to kind of showcase that i'm leaning towards the longer duration fights because those ones are obviously going to get more value generally speaking by her just constantly ramping up those ultimates and you're not going to get rng as much because some of the fights could just really go poorly and uh well here we go in guild hunts. Now I could test in like dungeons and stuff, but we don't really have a bunch of good dungeons to really test out in. So I figured this is kind of giving a good impression how much DPS you could actually get out of Purin. So we'll go ahead and just skip ahead on the base level fight. This is kind of what I normally will hit. Um, I actually did just do some upgrades. So 460 million there not too bad let's literally just take out res and see if there is a noticeable uh difference here so we'll go ahead and drop here in in boop and uh we'll move our records up there we go go ahead and skip ahead 
and see if there's any notable notice, noticeable damage increase and check that out Ooh, a 70 million dps increase not nearly as significant as the guild boss as i said maybe that's just rng i don't know but one thing's for certain and that is she is providing a lot of additional dps to your team as a support unit very very comparable to someone like rez i would imagine in basically every scenario but the advantage to her not only is the dps that you're getting but also you're kind of getting this little bit of extra healing coming out and of course as i said earlier we still have this big boost to get which is basically just a ton of additional damage reduction for your team and then for exclusive 30 it's going to restore energy for your entire team every second right so if that's 10 energy right if i remember correctly like a north end ultimate's like around 800 energy so that means that the 10 energy every second ends up being an ultimate every 80 seconds or so for your entire team for the most part that's really good so you're gonna get quite a few additional ultimates which i think is gonna ramp up the damage even more now we're not really gonna get more damage out of her as we level her up if you go ahead and go for immortal unless you're getting the exclusive 30 there really isn't much more besides additional survivability as well as additional healing so would i use this character at mythic 2 ironically from what i said earlier on in the video i probably would she's going to be able to be used at a low level because of what she's providing and her unreliance on max hp attack defense these types of things so try her out i think she's going to be an excellent excellent addition to a lot of people's comps and i'm excited to have her i'll be testing out tachikoma tomorrow stay tuned let me know what you think about Piran. these are just the first impressions i could be way off that's just my initial testing, some of the damage that she's able to deal. But I'm curious to hear what you all have to say, and I'll see you all for the next one.